We're not done with this storm just yet, even though it is losing wind intensity. I want to bring in AccuWeather hurricane expert Dan Kotlowski with more on this storm. Dan, good evening to you, sir. Hi, Adam. The first thing I want to talk about here is something that if you've been on Twitter throughout the day, uh, a lot of meteorologists were talking about the tweet that Tulane University sent out claiming that impacts there on campus were worse than what they were told was going to happen. They said that this path of the storm tracked a little farther east than what the National Hurricane Center said. A lot of meteorologists coming to defend the National Hurricane Center and AccuWeather and on our tweets that uh, this forecast was pretty darn good for how many days out. I want your take on how well this forecast panned out and then eventually I, I would like you to go into sometimes the eye will kind of does these wobbles. Maybe that's what they were talking about. Yeah, I, I think overall the forecast was excellent uh, on this. Uh, I mean, uh, almost three days out uh, here at AccuWeather and even Hurricane Center, we were talking about a, a Category 4 hurricane uh, at, at landfall. So uh, there was enough time for people to prepare this. Now, when, once the uh, system did make landfall, um, you know, again, uh, the wind field does expand about the center of circulation. And uh, again, we were seeing wind, wind gusts well over 120. It was a ship report, 172 mile an hour wind gusts. So uh, it shouldn't be at all surprising that wind gusts were probably over 100 miles an hour, especially on the high rise buildings. Again, as you go higher up uh, ab above the surface on some of those high rises, more than likely some of those wind gusts were probably well over 100 miles an hour. Uh, and wow. that was within uh, what was, was being forecasted. As you point out, hurricanes do so colloidal loops. They, uh, they loop uh, basically counterclockwise and clockwise. Usually it's counterclockwise uh, as they move. So it's a swirly uh, looking uh, storm there. So they it could have wobbled a little bit to the east and a little bit to the left, uh, to the west. So, but again, the impacts were still there. We were still calling for, uh, you know, a phenomenal uh, a damage path with this system. So I don't think there's really too much to argue that the track forecasts were pretty darn good. I know sometimes it takes additional time for reports from these areas uh, to, to make it to the media. Uh, how bad have been uh, or have uh, parts of southeastern Louisiana uh, really been? Do we do we expect things to, to get worse or seem worse than they already are? I think we've seen already that, I mean, the drones have been out flying around and we've seen some phenomenal damage, especially in Grand Isle, which got the eastern side of the eye wall. And uh, no doubt the big oil uh, facility there in, uh, in, in, the, uh, in the port there, uh, port uh, uh, for was it, <laughs> I forget how to pronounce Fushan. it. Fushan. We made Fushan, yeah, Port Fushan. Um, that's that's a huge port that uh, deals with uh, uh, petrochemical uh, industry, and so uh, no doubt that that's uh, that's going to be a huge, huge uh, uh, a problem for the next several days. Again, that will impact everybody because I think gas prices will probably go up because of it. But you can see that the damage here is again as advertised very impressive, you know, for uh, giving a cat for hurricane. And I want to remind people, this was on the verge of probably becoming a cat five. If this had slowed down a little bit, maybe an hour or two before making landfall, it may have attained the cat five status. But again, that can be debated as much as we can. But this is definitely, uh, you know, we're going to see a lot of uh, damage. The other thing too about this, Adam, is just like this is showing, the power lines are down all over the place. And yeah. it was a huge, it was a huge um, a tower uh, holding, uh, you know, all these electrical lines that go into the city of, of New Orleans that just plunged into the water. Mm. So when you have a major line like that plunging into the water, uh, you're talking about days, maybe weeks before uh, most people will be back to power again. So that's going to be the big story about this, about the fact that power will not be restored to a lot of places for maybe weeks. And that's even with the help. I, I heard uh, from the governor of Louisiana, uh, John Bell Edwards, that 22 different states have sent linemen to come help get things uh, repaired here. But yeah, even still, it's going to take weeks. Um, and with the heat and the humidity, uh, that could lead to some some problems as well, right? Exactly. That's that's another issue. Is is most people live in New Orleans area, in this area where the power is out, they li live 
uh, in air conditioning. It's just so steamy down there. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, we've seen the real fields over 100 degrees there common this time of the year. And so uh, it's going to be really uh, a, a, a big problem. People will have to uh, deal with uh, <laughs> living outside or or at least trying to get uh, themselves cooled off. And uh, so that will be a monumental uh, task for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the fact we have about a, a minute left, a little less than how many of these storms as of late, both this season, last season, and years before, that will rapidly intensify before landfall. I know that was a, an issue because Louisiana had four landfalls last year. Uh, and so is this the new normal? I'm afraid uh, we may be seeing the new normal, but you know something? I was looking at a, a, a storm which hit the same area back in 1965, Betsy. Mm -hmm. Betsy went under rapid intensification also. It wasn't quite as strong. It was like 140 mile an hour winds when it hit made landfall. It was moving around uh, 18 to 22 miles an hour. So it had a phenomenal storm surge because it was moving so fast. But uh, I do believe that the uh, since we had six storms last year that rapidly intensified, again, we have to assume that is the case with almost any storm that crosses the mm -hmm. Gulf of Mexico. Dan, thank you so much for your expertise, your time. We're going to check back in with you in about another hour. Again, uh, we appreciate all the work you do. Okay, Adam. We'll be right back here on AccuWeather Prime. Hey, AccuWeather fans, if you want to see more videos like this one, check out some of our other ones right here. And if you like what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more from AccuWeather.